Good afternoon from DB Acres Homestead. This is Dawn, and I wanted to update you guys on something that we've decided to do. We're kind of moving the homestead in a little bit of a different direction. Not a huge difference, but we decided to sell all these little ladies except for Roxy the Bard Rock and one other of the Leghorns. Um, we have noticed that our khaki Campbell lays like crazy and everything that we've heard from friends and that we have read says that khaki Campbells and specific breeds of ducks can lay for 10 years, only slowing up laying a bit here and there. And they generally are not too affected by molting or temperatures or daylight savings time, things like that. We already have a good number of chickens for us and I feel like between the flock that we have and our pecans and the khaki Campbells that we're going to get next spring and little Biscuit who's a khaki Campbell, I feel like it's going to be a really good thing for our homestead, switching over to more khaki Campbells. And then I want to always keep probably as someday as our, our chickens pass on, I'd like to always keep about 10 or so chickens. I love having chickens on the homestead. They're great for eating bugs. They're just amazing to have. I love hearing a rooster in the morning. But uh, moving forward, I think we're going to do more ducks for eggs. S specifically, at this point, the khaki Campbell, though someone else had talked to me about golden 300s, so I am going to look into those too. It is more of a hybrid duck, so we likely would not be able to breed them. I want something that I can breed on my own because as the world kind of goes a little bit crazy, um, on our self-sufficiency journey, I really feel like producing our own food and having our animals breed and raising the next generation of animals, I feel like it, it's just a really smart move for the future. It's definitely a, a goal of ours that, you know, it's kind of long range, but I can see it out there. I think it's, it's definitely a good goal to move towards. So that being said, eight of these little ladies are going to go with a special family and I've been talking with the lady and she has a nice farm and a big chicken coop and she said that they're just gonna love on them and spoil them and I'll tell you what that sure makes my heart happy and the kids and David's heart happy and uh, we definitely any animal that we sell to someone we always hope it's gonna have its very best life and receive lots of love and these little ladies will give them some delicious eggs. Uh, they'll be laying here pretty quick. It, it won't be too terribly long because they're uh, three months old. So, um, so you know, it is hard to say goodbye. We hand raised these little guys and they are sweeties. Um, we did decide to keep um, Roxy. She is a favorite, a family favorite. And then we thought, you know, she was raised with all of these other gals and we felt bad taking them all away. So we did decide to keep her one buddy because we are going to um, integrate them into the flock probably the week of November 1st because they'll be old enough. And I really didn't want Roxy going into the flock all by herself. It, it just didn't seem right. You know, and if we could avoid that, I, I really like introducing in sets of two if possible. It, it's always worked well for us thus far. And so, um, but we're going to say goodbye to these little ladies tonight. Um, my husband will be dropping them off and it's a farm not too far away from here. I have asked that she would send us pictures and let us see how they settle in. And, and uh, I'd like to see where they're living and what it's like. And I'll let you know. And if I'm able to, I'll post the picture on here. And, um, but moving forward, I am, I feel really pleased with the new plan that we're looking ahead to. I feel like having more ducks for more duck eggs is, uh, it's, it's going to be a really good fit for our family. As I've said in other videos, there is no one size fits all in homesteading. You have to do what works best for you. Another thing that we really like about the khaki Campbells and about many of the duck breeds but specifically the khaki Campbells because I do have experience with that duck right now. Um, they are amazing foragers. I mean, slugs, 
worms, beetles, beetles and bugs that my chickens won't even touch. That Khaki Campbell, she will go after with enthusiasm <laughs> and she will not give up until she gets the beetle. And so she'll even eat like some pill bugs. And for whatever reason, um, none of our chickens like pill bugs. So, and that's fine. They need to eat what they want to eat. But I love that the Khaki Campbell does not let a lot go to waste. So um, we feel like moving forward, it's also going to be a more economical bird for our farm. So I will let you know as we go through all of this new process, kind of switching over a bit, how everything's going. Of course, in the spring, you will see us buying those sweet little Khaki Campbell babies. And uh, eventually, right now, we're probably going to start out with a mess of females. And then eventually, we may get a uh, Khaki Campbell Drake and start breeding on our own. Um, I am a little concerned because Mal the Mallard is Biscuit's man. And I don't know how he would take to a Khaki Campbell Drake coming in. It is always a little concerning. Uh, a couple of drakes can be a little scary. So um, you never know what the dynamic is going to be. So you just try it. And if you have to, you build them another enclosure and another house. And you do what you have to do. But uh, that's what we're thinking about for the future is breeding our own Khaki Campbells. So... I want to show you guys something else. Let me see if I can sneak out of here without any little birdies on my heels. Guys, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Let me lock them in. Okay, so aerial predators are such a real thing. <laughs> they can be scary. And we have noticed so many. And we had bought this netting, but we just have not had the time to put it up. Well, yesterday we had had it. A lot of the aerial predators, especially your hawks and buzzards, we saw a ton of them, approximately about 100 the other day migrating. And uh, it really concerned us. Um, most of the chicken yard is heavily wooded. <clears throat> but we do have some places where it is open and, you know, the chickens, they like to sunbathe right here. And so we wanted to be sure that they were as safe as possible. And so we have rigged up, right now it's, it's uh, it's rather um, crude. We don't have it exactly as nice as we would like it, but for right now, it serves the purpose. They had to extend right there in order to get the netting up there, and I think they did a fine job. Um, <clears throat> we'll probably make it a little bit prettier soon, but right now, it absolutely serves its purpose, and I'm proud of them for doing a good job on that. Um, there was another thing that was happening, um, <clears throat> and why we had to get this up stat, besides just the aerial predators, quite a few of our chicken every day around 3 p.m. and sometimes a little earlier would jump over the fence. And it's so crazy because my husband specifically made this six-foot fence because that's kind of the standard. Normally, you, you're not going to, if the animals imprint upon you know, their house and their yard, generally it is not an issue with flying the coop, but every day around three, and of course we do have multiple feeding times, so they could have been in search of food. We don't do the free choice thing because of, you know, vermin and other birds that would come in. I prefer to put out food, let them eat it up, and it be done. It just kind of really eliminates a lot of issues with <clears throat> other little animals coming in and insects and everything so um we were having you know a handful of them and of course our rooster was leading the pack and he would sit up there every afternoon jump down and then the other ladies would follow suit so now levi did a fine job of really getting this in here good so there's just absolutely no way that they could get up there um this was the only three places here, here, and here that they would jump out. The rest of this is some meshy stuff and, the, you know, your typical wiring that you put on animal fences. They did not want to mess with that. They never have even tried. Now, obviously, where there's a will, there's a way. If they wanted to fly over, they absolutely could if they were desperate to. They seem to love it in here. I think, you know, they found something that they like to do and they would go out and they would... They would come peck at the door and try to get our attention and they would go get 
all kinds of bugs and stuff in the yard because they do enjoy free ranging. We let them out multiple times a day, but we do have the times of the day where the predator count is higher, the aerial predator count that is. And so we do have those times. It's generally from about like 11 to 2.30 that we do put them uh, back in the chicken yard just because, okay, here's Biscuit. If y'all can see her, she was chasing a bug. Let's see if she's going to do it. Sorry to stop mid-sentence, but it was just so stinking cute. She is like a warrior bug hunter. Look at that girl go. She's got to be about her business. Making eggs is hard work, so you got to get a lot of calories, huh, Biscuit? But anyways, um, the... Uh, with all the aerial predators out between those times, we did try to make sure that the chickens were up in those time frames. But the chickens would decide that they wanted to come right back out, and that was not working for us. It was causing some stress for some of the kids. They would get stressed out and have to run out here and put them up. And we just thought, you know what? We have got to get this netting up. And it seems to be a good fix because so far nobody has tried to get out. And uh, the, the true test will be today at 3, but it's not too far from that. We're a couple hours off from that. I'll keep you posted how it goes. Um, I'm feeling really good about it. Let's see if you can see it from right here. It's a, it's a really good barrier. And I think the hawks will, hawks, you know, and other aerial predators, they have very keen vision. I'm positive, you know, that they'll be able to see that and, and we'll stay away. Here's a view of it from the outside. I don't know how well y'all can see that with the sun. Hopefully better than I can. <laughs> when I'm editing this, I'll know. But uh, once again, I'm really pleased. And I think it's going to be good for the chickens and serve a great purpose. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. See you real soon. God bless. Bye.